Good morning, my name is Camilo Benavides and today I am going to show a lecture entitled Thalamic and Mesencephalic Anaplastic Astrocytoma with spread to the cerebral pontine angle. Case report and literature review. Gliomas are the most frequent primary lesion at the supratentorial level, but their spread to the posterior fossa is unusual. However, there is some predilection for the four ventricle. Fatophysiology, risk factors, and routes of dissemination are not clear. So, lack of standardized treatments and prospective studies is evident. The prognosis is dismal, and few cases report multifocal gliomas due to dissemination from a thalamomesencephalic lesion to the cerebellopontine angle. Here we present a case report and a review of the literature. A clinical case documented with images, preparative, operative, and postoperative, and a review of the literature are presented. Case report. A 28-year-old female with a history of a thalamic and mesencephalic anaplastic astrocytoma diagnosed 13 months ago with biopsy and treated with Temo and cold brain radiotherapy was admitted complaining of two months of headache and vertigo with left third and right seventh nerve pulses, right hearing loss and right cerebellar syndrome. MRI before the first surgery uh, is shown here. An infiltrative lesion is observed with a cystic component at mesencephalic tectum, thalamus, and left ventricular atrium, hypotense on T1 and heterogeneous enhancement of the contrast medium, Hi hyperintense on T2 and flare without restriction to diffusion without calcification or bleeding. On trans-enhanced MRI shows an extraaxial lesion of 15 cc in the three neurovascular complexes of the right cerebellopontine angle with a mass effect on the brainstem. MRI before the second surgery is shown. An expansive lesion is observed with an extraxial appearance that involves the neurovascular complex of the right cerebellopontine angle with a displacement of the cerebellar peduncle, brainstem and ipsilateral fourth ventricle. The lesion is hypointense on T1 with heterogeneous enhancement of the contrast medium, hyperintense on T2 and flare without restriction to diffusion, without calcification or bleeding. The contrast enhancement in the proximal part of the 7 and 8 cranial nerve, the displacement of the 5th, 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves in the fiesta sequence, as well as the contrast, contrast enhancement and hyperintensity of the flare around the fourth ventricle are not worthy. Tomography of the temporal bone in axial and coronal, coronal section showing the absence of dilation of the internal auditory canal and or hyperostosis of the petrous bone is shown. The resonance perfusion shows the increase in volume and cerebral blood flow in the lesion of the cerebellopontine angle and around the fourth ventricle. Resonance spectroscopy showed choline, lactate, and lipid peaks, a decreased N-acetyl aspartate, and increased choline N-acetyl aspartate ratio. She was taken to surgery to a retrosigmoid craniotomy and subtotal resection was performed. Pathology showed an anaplastic astrocytoma again with a KI 
67% of 40%, for which oncology indicated radiotherapy and bevacizumab. On the left, the presence of a clear pink lesion that invades the entire extension of the right cerebellopontine angle uh, can be observed. On the right, the cavity after tumor resection is shown with significant decompression of the cranial nerves. However, infiltration of the seven and eight cranial nerves can be perceived, which did not allow a total resection of the lesion, given the high adherence that existed between both and the risks and the risk of in injured neurological damage. Discussion. The incidence of malignant gliomas is 5 by uh, 4 uh, 100,000 per year. Its dissemination to the posterior fossa is closely related to the four ventricle and its surroundings, surroundings being found in 3.8 to 10.3% of cases. This dissemination can occur through the white mother, blood vessels, cerebrospinal fluid, or iatrogenic root due to the intraoperative rupture of the ventricle. Dissemination in the case report could be related to subependymal dissemination by direct contact of the lesion with the cerebrospinal fluid of the third ventricle and ventricular atrium, facilitating the growth of seeds in the fourth ventricle and then migration to the foramen of Lushka until reaching the cerebellopontin angle, or leptomeningeal spread to the seven and eight cranial nerves, or finally spread by white fibers of the corticopontocerebellar fascicle. Age at diagnosis WHO tumor rate, corpus callosum involvement, and KI67 seems to be some risk factors. Radiation therapy at doses greater than 50 grays or chemotherapy with TEMO appears to improve symptoms and survival in some reports. Surgical management is reserved for high-grade symptomatic and mass-effect lesions. In supratentorial surgeries, avoiding ventricular opening, dissection below the leptomeninges, and avoiding irrigating the cavity with per when performing partial resection could prevent dissemination to four ventricle. But its presence is indicative of a final stages of the, of the disease, with an average survival for high-grade lesion of only 6.5 to 11 months. Take home message. The spread to the cerebellopontin angle of a supratentorial glioma is rare. However, its pathophysiology, management, and prognosis are dismal, like that described in the literature regarding dissemination to the fourth ventricle. Thank you very much.